Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, learners, yearners and key turners, welcome along to the Joe Spivey YouTube channel where we discuss books and little else. And uh, welcome back to another Conversational Peaks, folks. Um, I am uh, apologetic in advance. This is probably the second or third week on the spin that I have been, um, or might appear to be, rather pre-apic, rather self-indulgent, rather navel-gazing, um, rather solipsistic. Um, but it's something since I've given out my Instagram and my email that has, uh, seemingly possesses your minds as much as it does mine. Uh, this is the question of university, the... Um, the, the, the vices and virtues therein, the positives, the negatives, the left-hand column, the right-hand column, all of that stuff. So um, I'm, I usually pride myself on some extemporaneity and some uh, an, an ability to stand at the pulpit and just reel off some, some facts and some opinions without the aid of a teleprompter. But I do indeed have some notes today because this is an issue about which I care so dearly and is so pertinent to both myself and I have a funny feeling for approximately about uh, 30 or 40 percent of you, given the amount of emails I've had about it just this week. Um, so I thought I'd, yeah, commit some of it to a recording. There, there may be some jump cuts as I um, read a paragraph that I've written and then and then try and um, try and encapsulate it verbally. So, um, yeah, bear with me. Uh, hopefully I can maybe get some background stuff now, for example, of the university that I attended to. And ho hopefully I'm going to be in the editing studio and I'm going to be... Um, uh, 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 source, uh, sexing this up, as it were. I'm going to make it a little bit more fashionable, a little bit more uh, uh, appealing to the to the to you viewers. Um, so yes, let us get into it. Um, first of all, I believe in it in a limited capacity that the 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 kind of um, platonic ideal of the university is. Oh, second, first of all, actually, um, it is incredibly insulting to many of the viewers during uh, these video during these types of videos who say who feel the need to outline that theirs is a subjective experience and they'll only be talking about themselves, um, which is of course. Uh, blindingly obvious, um, as though viewers might assume that they are a 20-man amalgam of a, an entire legion of people. Of course, I will only be um, talking about my own experiences, but of course, I believe it has a wider applicability, which is, of course, the reason, as Mr. Churchill says, that I am sitting in this chair. Um, so yes, I believe the platonic ideal of the university, uh, its, its founding and guiding principles, as it were, are um, nothing short of remarkable, of course. The idea of learned, wizened pedagogues and matrons or whatever, um, you sort of uh, standing again at the pulpit at the middle of, in the middle of a lecture hall, um, who are cultivating both the curiosity, the diligence, the acuity, the ratiocination of uh, perhaps two and three hundred people at a time, that is obviously a, a meritable aim and something to be, something very desirable and something um, on which a, a society's rectitude ought to be predicated and all of this. Um, so that's all jolly good and, and you know, probably the, the University of Bologna in, in 1033 or whenever the hell they, they um, first came into being, I'm sure that's what it was. I'm sure it was what, what now seems to be a fool's paradise was in fact reality. Um, where you had, as I say, 20, 30, 40 in a seminar room, very, very curious, but very capable individuals, um, you know, not stymied by any technologies or any shyness or any social awkwardness. And you had um, an individual um, who was, you know, of the academy who had been doing um, um, some excellent and uh, inspiring and optimal work for 20 and 30 and 40 years and had put down their book for a second and, you know, chose to enrich those around them. That is obviously an excellent aim. Um, so therefore, the principle of university and the kind of um, the kind of cardboard box bullet point summation of one is perfect and is, um, as I say, meritable and ought to be something that towards which every society should strive for democratic security and for, um, I don't know, what, what, what might we say, the intellectual progression of even the hoi polloi, as it were. So yes, I've nothing against universities per se, as the phrase is. A um, little bit of background knowledge of myself. If somehow you've stumbled upon this video um, as a result of some university search and you're doing some, some um, if you're doing some, just some research, um, then I am, or was rather, for probably 15 or 16 years of my life, a kind of um, 
laudable and capable young man. I was, but 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 nonetheless, rather ignorant and not, not let's not say fidgety, but um, yeah, I, I was happy to coast at the top table, as it were. Um, I was, you know, I'm not I'm not saying that I was the t t the joint descendant of Wittgenstein of Shakespeare, um, but I was, yeah, I was always naturally right up there, um, regardless of how much effort I put in. Again, this isn't insouciance, this is repertage of observable facts. Um, but I was altogether usually more interested in um, the midfield administrations of Frank Lampard for Chelsea Football Club, or indeed um, the veracity of the WWE, or goodness knows what else, how orange that carrot is in the corner, whether that girl with the blonde hair is into me, yada yada yada, how um, loud of a noise I can make by throwing this whiteboard pen at the at, at, at the board. Um, you know, that that type of um, that type of impetuous silliness. Um, that was me for a good long while, and I was certain that I wouldn't attend university. I was um, hell bent for a good two or three years on being a professional cyclist. I would spend uh, regularly spend between ten and twenty hours in the chair, um, as the industry adage would have it, um, cycling about and get, getting myself um, some very very efficient. Aid aorta and all that type of thing, I was cardiovascularly excellent. Um, and so, again, I just, I did enough, I passed the mark, and um, all was well. And uh, this would be the general tone of, of, of some of the parents' evening interviews as well. They would, you know, the, the, the teachers would huff and puff. My, um, the, the, the greatest taskmaster that I will ever come across, my darling mother, was um, always sort of furrowing her brow and always, <laughs> always glowering at me afterwards. Um, but, but, such is the case. Um, so yes, I was hell-bent against it, and then um, what I regard as my kind of edification when I was about sort of 18 or 19, I watched, again randomly, two incidents that I randomly stumbled up, uh, upon, um, one of which was a parliamentary speech by the um, uh, 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 Conservative Minister for um, North East Somerset, I believe, Jacob Rees-Mogg, who was, I goodness knows what he was talking about, probably um, agricultural housing and planning, or, or, or town planning, or something like that, something on um, um, the metropolis, and he, for the first time, he was somebody who was obviously talking with a plum-throated voice, and was, um, you know, uh, uh, sort of dishing, dishing out some, some, um, some Chaucerian uh, references, and it was all jolly good, um, but he was somebody who made um, uh, intellectualism cool, or an intellect cool, or who made the um, fashioning of words to his own will, something that was a skill in of itself. I just used to obviously converse about, as I say, sport with my friends at the dinner, at the, uh, the park bench or, or the dinner table with my family. I didn't know that you could stand in the Houses of Parliament and that was a, a kind of a, a, an honourable vocation, um, that you could read from a speech and you could regale t 20 and 30 and 40 people and you could use words like stentorian and sesquipedalian and protuberant and um, flo floxy knocking a hill of pillification. I was completely, uh, I became completely enamoured with words. And then I stumbled upon an article um, in Esquire by Will Self. And as I say, and of course the um, the kind of uh, stylized debauchery that is the Martin Amis novels. And before long, I was a little geek, folks. I uh, put down the bicycle pretty much, and um, yeah, took up the books, and yeah, learnt all the words, and. Um, attached myself to some of the theories and started writing bits and bobs myself and became an aspiring academic, believe it or not. Um, and that's pretty much the point at which I decided to join a university. I managed to have, you know, after years and years and years of recalcitrance and irreverence and nonsense, managed to um, procure myself some decent A-level results um, at, I think, A-star A-B, I think, which works out to roughly three A's, I think. And so I managed to get myself a position studying English literature at the University of Manchester, which is a Russell Group University, obviously in the northwest of England. Um, for those of you living in goodness knows where, Peru or Tennessee or Wisconsin or um, here's a, a random Asian country that's going to come to mind, Turkmenistan or whatever, I do realise that I have a wide reach. Um, yes, so for you guys uh, living away, northwest, uh, in the northwest of England, and uh, the Russell Group Universities are one below, um, the Oxbridges and the Durhams as well. Durham's a kind of interstice of its own. Um, it's, 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 it's famous for a lot of Oxbridge rejects, um, but the Russell Group, so any, anything with the University of generally, Birmingham, Sheffield, Manchester, I think, are all part of the Russell Group. Um, so I was there. So it's, it's prestigious, um, and it's 
by all accounts hard to get in and it, it, it must be pointed out at this stage before any of university occurred that, that this all took place um, uh, against the backdrop at least of a um, of a putative deadly virus the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic of 2020 onwards um, so I took a year out between the years of 2020 and 21, I believe, yes, um, where I worked in the service industry at a premium cycle store and um, negotiated uh, 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 commercial deals between the values of five and ten thousand pounds, learnt to do bits and bobs mechanically and how to, obviously I've got, I've got a little bit of a gift of the gab, I'm quite positive, I can adumbrate and adduce uh, the positives of a product and so, but I, but I lived a very, very solitary existence at that time, folks, because uh, that was governmentally mandated and um, yes, so I, I the, 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 the genie was very much rattling around in the bottle for what I'm about to say um, regarding university. It would be it would be it would be poor to say that it it wouldn't be correct to say that I went to university as a um, a starry eyed scholastic uh, 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 kind of somebody with ridiculous expectations of what it was going to be like. Um, I've since realised that I probably just went to um, find myself a decent friendship group, find myself uh, a capable young female who may heaven forbid turn out to be my wife or whatever. Um, I, I went, you know, I, I knew that it, I didn't know that it was going to be full of aim aimless wastrels and. Um, complete hedonists, um, but I didn't go thinking that I was going to be the president of some union, I, I didn't think that I would smash everything, I just wanted essentially just to tick a box and to fill a CV. Um, but yes, uh, of course, now we're getting into the subjective aspect. I, of course, studied English literature at university, and um, to put it lightly, that didn't require an awful lot of the candidates. It was just sort of eight to nine hours a week, weekly of um, uh, uh, attendance, uh, and you would be lectured to, and you would be involved in seminar groups. Um, but it's fair to say, I mean, again, I need to outline, I need to caveat the fact that if you're wanting to go into the industries of dentistry, of medicine, of law, of microbiology, of um, nuclear physics, of, you know, logarithmic sequencing, if you essentially... If you want to go into the STEM fields, universities probably going to be jolly fine for you. There will be absolutely next to no issue when um, the concepts of right and wrong and of incorrect and correct and of, you know, all of that, um, you know, that, that post enlightenment burrowing down into um, the, the objective facts of something. Um, the STEM fields are damn good at that. I believe I had a lot of friends who did, uh, as I say, physics and did mechanical engineering and did medicine, knew a lot of medics there. Um, and they seemed to have, obviously they were stressed to the eyeballs because they were doing a proper degree. Um, but yeah, they, they never had any concerns about the academic suitability of their work or, or at least the kind of, yeah, they didn't have any, um, any qualms about the bedrock of what they were doing. They, um, yeah, they, they, were, they were able to go through their course and um, were enjoying it. Now, goodness me, this is a long way of saying that um, it, a few factors lead, uh, led to my, um, what might we say, my car crash, my collapse, my, um, yeah, ju 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 just my, the, the breaking down of um, myself and the university or whatever. Um, so, first of all, the social milieu is... Um, not peculiar to Britain in that it is alcoholic. Um, you'd have to be the most self-righteous puritanical Calvinist that would shut yourself in your room to not at least frequent some of the public houses two or three times a week. Um, you would have to be, yeah, as I say, the most self-abnegatory individual on the planet not to at least see the the, the um, procurement, distribution and abuse of alcohol and uh, even, heaven forbid, mind-altering drugs. Um, so that's that's another another key point is that, um, yeah, if you do find yourself having some free time at university, inevitably that is what it is spent on rather than croquet and tennis. Um, and of course that leads into my course uh, individually. So had I gone and done the sciences, had I gone and done, um, you know, microbiology, as I've already said, um, I probably wouldn't have had enough time to to to, to wassail and um, sort of roam around like a bacchanal, and it, the, the the process may have been a little bit more agreeable. So, um, what I'm trying to say is, if you are thinking of studying English literature at university, folks, um, unless you are trying out for Harvard or for Oxford and Cambridge, unless you're going to the cream of the crop, as it were, unless you're you're trying to get yourself uh, a seat at the big t the big boy table, um, then I'm going to say that it is not worth it. You should climb down. You should do um, a degree in law if you've got the qualifications to attend um, university uh, if, if, to um, enrol yourself on a law degree at university. You should not do a humanity. Don't do it. 
Don't do history, don't do English, don't do psychology, don't do sociology, don't do any of it because they are what is termed nowadays and what has become um, a titbit of the, of the right wing. I'll, I'll happily admit that. I'm starting to sound like Nigel Farage and Liz Truss, but it is nonetheless the case. Um, the, univer the, the humanities faculty at almost every single Russell Group University, I know this because of the conversations I've had, I've done my own personal longitudinal study. This isn't just um, um, a priori stuff. Um, this isn't just uh, sort of imperial data. It's not it's not anecdotal bilge. It is, in fact, um, the collection of a whole lot of um, censure on the matter. Every seemingly every single humanities um, faculty at every single university has been ideologically captured. Now, I should like to write a book about this in the future. It's the journey of um, Foucault and of Karl Marx and of Jacques Derrida and of um, some of the, the other, uh, Terry Eagleton and of a, a lot of the, those sort of vague and inexact philosophers of the, late, of the mid and late 20th century, the march through the institutions, somehow cultural Marxism is supposed to be inextricably linked with anti-Semitism. Not quite sure where that comes from, but there we are. Um, but yes, um, it, it's, it's an attitude of... Um, it's 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 a kind of it's the tactic of the populace that these lecturers and these seminar tutors tend to use. Most of them, of course, there are some very healthy apples in in you know in the midst of this rotten orchard. But but as general, um, they use, as I say, the um, sh the, the kind of short term uh, sugar rush uh, intellectual tactics of the populist. They prescribe some very very um, some very easy concepts or some very easy fixes to some very complex issues. So they think that Western society can be um, not just characterised or typified by, but completely and utterly um, encapsulated with the phrase oppressor versus oppressed. They think that one set of individuals with one set of immutable characteristics, i.e. white skin and drooping appendages, are by definition uh, more predisposed to aggression or to um, you know, to manipulation and subjugation and horrible nefarious activities. And one other group, for example, um, um, you know, some sort of some ethnic minorities who happen to be homosexuals and are female, those people are incapable of any type of malevolence and um, their works that they write, no matter um, the objective merit of those works, ought to be studied over those horrible white men in the canon. That is essentially everything that, that those are the lines that they run on. It's it's the politicization of art, which I'm not saying that, 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 that um, art shouldn't incorporate politics, but it cannot be um, continually typified as um, a political act of vengeance or whatever on a daily basis, which is what they do. Um, the amount of articles that I wrote for the Free, uh, the, 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 the free Speech Union on this type of thing um, are innumerable, frankly. They're all on my Google Docs page. But yes, that is what you need to know before you go in. Um, if you want to read Macbeth and say that it's a question of, um, you know, psychological turmoil and of um, the sort of striving towards our desirous ends and to, um, you know, what, what's the phrase? Noughts had all spent when our desire is got without content. Um, Tis safer to be that which we destroy than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. If you want to, you know, sort of study any of that, um, historically or, or literarily or along any of the sociological or psychological lines, they will not allow you to do that. Um, the entire realm of study is of um, blacks versus whites, men versus women, what Harold Bloom um, rightly anathematized as the school of resentment. Um, they are full of um, apathetic and really rather officious and austere and haughty and yet dim-witted, narrow-minded and air-headed um, politicos, essentially, people that are left-wing and left-wing only, um, who, who do not see any virtues in uh, the work of a, a, a white heterosexual male, unfortunately. So if that puts you off, if that is something, I mean, many of you, because of course, um, you know, such prevailing social visions are um, now the, 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 the kind of rule rather than the exception, many of you, heaven forbid, are, trying, are, are finding that rather agreeable, um, but that should not be the case. So you have that, you have, even if I were doing it online, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it, but if you mix in the wassailing social milieu and add into that the fact that the course doesn't require much of you anyway. I, I always found myself stroking my chin and thinking, well, goodness me, there's a huge gulf. There's a, a huge dip disparity between the amount that I am preparing for this course, i.e. moving 200 miles west, uh, getting myself uh, a, a room in a tower block, 
moving rooms, using different cutlery, eating different food, visiting different shops, going along different walking trails, getting a different bus, talking to different people, all to produce one essay every six weeks. This seemed absolutely maniacal. If I had to go in for five and six and seven hours a day, like at primary and secondary school, that would have been jolly fine for me to move. But I found that I was just, even though I am a very gregarious, very loquacious, um, very, I think, quite charismatic figure that can get along with most people. It's it's a very, very, very lonely environment. You will find yourself perhaps going 24 and 48 hours without talking to anybody properly um, outside of a seminar or a lecture. It's very lonely, unless even, even if you are the champ of the campus, if you are the son of Boris Johnson, if you've just released a book deal and you've, you know, you've, you've, you've got a pocket full of money and you have, um, you know, lots of supporters or whatever, if you're a social media star, even then, um, because of the atomize, the atomizing effect of um, some of the ways in which the, the tower blocks are put up, um, you're going to find it difficult to kind of converse with people on a regular basis. It's not nearly like school where everybody knows one another and you're all intricately involved. It's, yeah, it's, it's so much colder and uh, more soulless, which is, um, again, it's not something that, that I, is peculiar to the University of Manchester. I've been having low dozens of conversations with you guys over email. I've been stunned by the influx of uh, messages pertaining to this subject. So, yeah, I thought I'd commit something to video. Um, I don't know whether I've covered all of the areas. It's, this has been a bit frantic. I've vacillated this way and that. Um, I haven't really referred to my notes, which is why I keep glancing over to them as well, you can see, but but I haven't gone in there. Um, so yes, please do uh, populate the comments with some of your questions or some of your um, some of your own experiences, heaven forbid. Recommend it to somebody who perhaps is considering doing English literature at some point or somebody who, yeah, is, is, is a, uh, a prospective university student. Um, yeah, obviously I've got to bear some of the responsibility myself. Um, I could have had a... Um, a sort of uh, a more dialed in moral compass, uh, somebody that wasn't, you know, uh, tractable and impressionable and um, somebody who could be strong armed into, you know, a, a, a drink and drug filled jamboree every now and then. If I'd have been, a, if, I'd have a, if, I, if I'd have had a straighter back and had uh, done my buttons up occasionally, then who knows, heaven forbid, uh, things might have been different. But yes, I have, um, uh, I've, I'm sure I, many of you know, I've done 66.6 .6 recurring of a, an English literature course. I can go back and do the third year anytime. Um, but I thought that my own professional goals and the goals of the university were at variance and that I shouldn't waste 12 more months um, paying them another, what, what would it be, uh, £9,000, I believe. So yes, that's pretty much me, folks. Um, I'm going to try and cut this up, hopefully. I've hopefully I've cut this up reasonably well and it flows a little better than what I've been talking about. Uh, and hopefully I've, I've adduced some decent points, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm probably done for now. Uh, and I'm going to say thank you ever so much for watching BookTube. And say goodbye.